Good morning. So my wife told me I should have more a white long sleeve and a bow, but I don't have any. So anyway, so what does this song uh, got to do with our message today? Well, this week um, I have been have gone to where's that? I get to enjoy some good foods uh, with my families and with friends. Uh, this one is with the pastors. So, not only me, eh? all of us. And actually, there's not much difference. No? Uh, I love food and usually think about food. Uh, so, hopefully, after this, uh, there will be some invitation for meals. Uh, but seriously, I also got to watch uh, over my old TV. Okay, so let's. Uh, but uh, come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that this morning uh, we can be here and to worship you, to hear from you. Lord, we ask that may you want to speak to us and may the message that we hear be coming from you and not my own part. Uh, may you guide us and uh, that we'll be careful to know your word and uh, what you have in store for us. Let us and may you keep our focus in you this morning. As you pray in Jesus' name. So just imagine that you are uh, going to start a restaurant business. I think some of them have a business here. Uh, and you, you try to start a buffet, buffet business. And it only, uh, you have to buy all sorts of plates, utensils. Glasses, chairs, tables, and the lights. But for today, let's just focus on the plates. You may have some plates lying around uh, in your home, but they're not suitable for the restaurant that you have in mind. Uh, you, they may be used for maybe dogs, rats, and other filthy animals, or it all already has stains all around. So you have to get rid of all these uh, old plates. And the next thing you will do is what? Truly, you go out and choose the best place in the world that you can find to present the image that you have for your business of the restaurant. So as you go looking around for those plates, you already have that intention of how you will use it in your restaurant. You will sh make sure that uh, also that this will not have any resemblance to any of the 30 ones that you owned before. You want it to be special. You want it to be shiny, to be clean, and even sanitary. So that's just how God also plans it for his people, the Israelites. Now when he brought them to the promised land. So let's take a look at Leviticus chapter 20, verses 22 to 24. It says, You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my rules and do them. That the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. And you shall not walk in the customs of the nation that I am driving out before you. For they did all these things, and therefore I detested them. But I have said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess. A land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has separated you from the peoples. In the common practice, of the people uh, that God drove away is that they will go to the necromancers uh, in search of their future. So necromancy is a supposed practice of magic involving communication with the deceased, either by summoning their spirit as an apparition or raising them bodily, and for the purpose of divination or imparting the means to foretell the future events or discover hidden knowledge. So to bring back from bring back someone from the dead. Now or we also commonly known as the black magic. So this image uh, is very common in computer games. And we should be careful about it. Uh, I don't know if computer games. I don't think there's much here. But I think for the youth, um, they they play games and they're familiar with images like this uh, and we may think that it's just all fun and games uh, for them to play but it, it, it is 
if we may be going into deeper things in which God is not pleased So God is leading the Israelites to the promised land. And He sends His rule among His people. He does not want them to engage in death or wickedness or turning to mediums or, or other gods because He is to be their only God. How can He be their God if they will turn away from Him and seek other gods? Then Leviticus 20, 26, 27 also says, You shall be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy and have separated you from the peoples, that you should be mine. A man or a woman who is a medium or a necromancer shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones, their blood shall be upon them. So it's for this very reason why God drove the Canaanites or maybe the Amorites away and has brought the Israelites in. And if the Israelites will do the same thing, sacrificing to Molech or other gods, seeking mediums and other stuff, they will be kicked out of the place as well. So God has called the Israelites to be separated from the soul. That, that process is called holy, to be holy, which means to be set apart. Same with the song earlier about the other song that uh, God has called us to be set apart. We want Him to do us. So just like when the master of the restaurant brings home those chosen plates, He'll make sure that only plates that, that He had selected will go to the restaurant. Other plates will not be entertained. So we start with this uh, priesthood. The place has its priests. Maybe we can notice the handouts there. There are many places. So the plate represents the priests. They are the ones who offer food and fire offering to the master or to the Lord. The priests were carefully chosen for they are the special people. And they serve in the temple. Yet from time to time, a priest or anyone else can become ceremonially unclean. In Leviticus 21, they are mentioned of how one can become ceremonially unclean. It's by touching the dead, or by being close to the dead, or making bow patches on their head, having cuts on their bodies, or marrying a prostitute or a divorced woman. And some others, and it's all regarded there. So what is ceremonially and clean. In the Old Testament times, uh, they have many ways to separate the, those who are clean from the unclean. Uh, they put God as holy and or clean, the one who is very clean, and in reference to Him, and by command, no one should approach God if He is unclean. They are very careful not to put a stain in the temple. And they also cannot, if they're unclean, they also cannot touch something that is clean, or else they will also make it unclean. So there's a ceremony to make one clean. Usually it's through washing and also waiting for a couple of days to become clean again before they can serve God. So when I think about cleanness, I have also thought about babies. I also thought about babies. Uh, whenever we will go for a visitation uh, to uh, someone who has just given a baby, I will check whether I am healthy enough to be near that baby. I don't want any disease or sickness or flu to affect the baby because of me. And by God's grace, as Jess and I are expecting one soon, I'm thinking of how to clean our home or yeah, so that nothing dangerous will come in contact with our baby. We know that babies are delicate and somewhat fresh and clean. I think. And, and to present an anything harmful or harmful thing will be a no no. no. But we would want the area to be as clean as possible. Although we know that we will not be able to totally avoid it, the, the dirt, 
So we will just take all the necessary precaution to keep the baby safe. So when the baby comes to this world, uh, it is, I'm sure that it is every parent's desire that the baby will be as healthy as possible. So avoiding the sickness that easily contaminates the babies. So it's the same thing when we think about how we are to approach God. Not that He is weak or delicate, or He is actually the opposite, but He is strong and mighty. But aside from that, we know that God is holy, set apart from this world. He is clean. He is pure. That no sin can withstand Him or is ever to be present in Him or even around Him. So how can we, as sinful, wicked creature, full of deformities and a weakly, prepare ourselves to approach the God who is uncontaminated, as spotless, unpolluted, and a divine being. So let's take Sunday worship as an example today. So how how do you prepare yourself to come uh, be coming here this morning? Do you come to worship with a hatred towards the brother? Do you come with a or do you come with a submissive heart, willing to obey? God's command. Do you come in humility? Again, we know that it is through Jesus that we can approach God. But here in Leviticus 21, of course, this is in the Old Testament times, and it was through priests that people can approach God. So just a few weeks, few weeks ago, we are studying the book of Hebrews. And it was mentioned that the priest stands between God and man, or that he is the leader. For it's in Turner, as the, our Reverend Powell says, he's like a lawyer who is presenting a case to a judge on behalf of someone. So the priest stands in the Lord's presence on behalf of the people, and upon coming to God, they should also make themselves pure and without sin. And that's before because they are standing before uh, before God. They, they have to make themselves clean before they can face God. So we're just starting. And that's how most perception work with that. But that really well will invite at 7 p.m. but we start at 8 30. Uh, anyway, so we'll just go to our first point. Uh, so that's the uh, Anyway, so we'll, we'll go to our first point, so, uh, which is in Leviticus 21, verse 1 to 9. So we'll just read verse 1. He says, And the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, No one shall make himself unclean for the dead among his people. So the appetizer plate. So first, when we say plate, again, you can relate it to the priest, or maybe you can relate it to yourself as well. Or we can say it's the sons of Aaron or his descendants. This faith should not be touched by anything dead. So not touched by death. Now obviously, uh, if you have a clean plate or if you're going to eat, who would want to eat in a plate that has a dead thing in it? Whether it's a cockroach, it's a lizard, Ant, or worse, a rat, or even a dead person. And even if you wash it a lot of times, you still might not want to use it again because it's already contaminated. However, if it's a relative of yours, you may have some consideration whether to use it again or not. As a priest stands before God, he is to be clean. Clean and should not make himself unclean before the Lord. And so, no contamination of dead things. Yet there are many times that we can't avoid a timely death of a loved one. And God is not killjoy. He is compassionate and understanding that if an immediate family dies, it's okay, it's not a problem. There, there, there is time for mourning 
and recovery. So the priest who is serving in the temple can be interrupted in the service so to attend to the family members. What God does not approve of is coming to him in an unclean manner or unclean spirit, not respecting who he is, knowing that he is our holy God. So what's wrong with death? Well, death, as we know, symbolizes victories, sin, uh, sins, sorry, sins, victory, uh, the victory of sin. But to some people, these are not just ordinary visits to the death. Uh, it goes deeper. But as earlier we said about mentioned about necromancy, <coughs> but they have certain practices because of the death, which God is not pleased with. Next thing, should not the plate should have no scratches or chips, okay, on the plate. Leviticus 21 5 says, they shall not make false patches on their head, nor shave off the edges of their ears, nor make any cuts on their body. So if you have your Bible, just open it to the Leviticus 21. So this, according to the commentary, Peter says, is or are superstitious belief. There are people who offer sacrifices or their offspring to Molech, you know, kids, you know, defining God's sanctuary and profaning God's holy name. So bad cuttings, a big bad cuttings or shaving of beard, these were hidden practices for the dead. It's like making a pact or covenant with the dead or mark of respect for the dead or trying to stop unusual death within uh, that is being occurring in their family. Uh, just like what most Chinese families are doing during death, uh, some of us uh, have their so-called ghost man, that's not maybe death, or just I think, a few months ago, there's a ghost man. They will burn joss paper or incense. Okay, so joss paper or incense wishing to reach out to their deceased family. I was shocked that in our condo, uh, in the stairs, there was a person burning those papers uh, in a container and it's very big flame. Uh, so I was scared that the condo would burn up. Uh, there was even, but after that, there was a report in some condo that it got burned up because of that. Uh, so maybe they're really in touch with their family now. Hopefully not. So, and God wants his people to be free from these idolatrous or superstitious practices. Sad to say, many of Chinese and Filipino culture or tradition has much to do with superstitions. Uh, so some in Chinese tradition or culture, I don't know if I'm going to ask this, is it tradition or superstition? A, a engagement for the Chinese, they would ask the woman and before entering, they would walk backwards. So is that tradition or superstition? Well, it's very clear. It's superstition. And for the, so this are a mixture of Chinese and Filipino. Also, pe people would wear anting anting. That's it. Yeah, so superstitions or tradition? Okay. People say, when your ears are itching, someone is talking about you. Yeah. Superstition for it, huh? How about the whole line of white? Superstition or tradition? Speak Chinese. Tradition. Yeah. Or or when taking a picture, it's not allowed that there are three, only three person. Okay? So, and then, when you have a food, you're eating, uh, and then you put it there, in the middle, okay? So, I don't know And, how about manopo? So, thank God, it's very clear for all of you. So here, if they cut their bodies uh, for a different God, 
or the death god, they actually they are not fit <laughs> to be in the presence of the real god, for they seek the lesser god. So if the plates scratches, the, the scratches on the plates are not for the design of the restaurant that the master had in mind, then there is no place for that plate at all. So and the appendizer plate should also be not mixed with other plates used by others. So it is not to be joined with a different plate. A clean plate is not to be merged with a used one or an incompatible one. That's my plate. Uh, and there is a designated plate for each uh, if necessary. So verse 7 says, They shall not marry a prostitute or a woman who has been defiled, neither shall they marry a woman divorced from her husband, for the priest is holy to his God. Oh, sir, that it doesn't say the priest should not marry, but not to be married to the wrong ones. If the Lord desires a king priest to him, before him, he also desires a king partner suitable for him. So this is a big topic regarding divorce, spouse, or uh, what's the other one? Is that or a prostitute? Yeah. So can they marry? Can they remarry or not? We also discussed yesterday about being annulled. Are they allowed to marry again or not? Would that be considered adultery or not? So um, the Bible just says it's only free when you uh, when the partner dies. It doesn't say anything else. So this is just the appetizer thing. We now go to the main dish. So this is found in verses 10 to 15, which we have already read earlier. So the main dish or the dinner plate is to be always available for the pastor's use. This plate contains all the beautiful artwork created for the enjoyment of the master. It must not leave its place or go out of the restaurant, for this is the most special plate, one where it is recognizable. It is a trademark of the master. If there is a good portion of requirements for the appetizer plate, all the more for this main dish. It cannot be used elsewhere. For the whole duration of the meal, it is to be used solely for the master. It carries all the best and choice food for the master to enjoy. It does not leave the master's sight and is used to satisfy the purpose of the master. The plate also cannot be taken out of the master's table while he is enjoying it. By taking food away from a child, uh, they will cry. Uh, but we have to wait until the duration of his service is over. Verse 12 says, He shall not go out of the sanctuary, lest he profane the sanctuary of his God. For the consecration of the anointing oil of his God is on him. I am the Lord. The priest has God's anointing. He is no ordinary priest. He was consecrated to wear the priestly garment. That's why of the intricate design of the plate. Now that while he was doing a priestly duty, and one of his parents died, the mother or the father, he cannot just stop what he's doing to attend to it. We're talking about the high priest here. He said, he shall remain in his office, for he is the high priest. He has the anointing oil of God. He cannot just stop what he's doing, like right now, and just go out and come and uh, And But for by then, he will become unclean and he will go again through the process of what you call that, sanctification and everything, or consecration, which may take some time. So the problem we have today is that our commitment is also divided. We want to serve God. We want to love God, but at the same time, we cannot help but please ourselves. So I used to teach a guitar class in uh, ESOB, uh, towards the China students. I can't speak Mandarin, but I can't 
for the club. Uh, so uh, it was going well for quite some time. Yeah, but I think it was I was going to prepare for a very for a wedding. So I stopped teaching guitar. But after that, I find it hard to compete once again because of other um, things that I have to do, like home and something. So maybe it's just like that. And that's why some of us also stop serving uh, or stop ministering because we tend to do our own things first because having more done, which all we want is to have total commitment always available for the master. That's why he says they're always available for the master's Next is that he was made an important type of Christ or eminent or a shadow of Christ. Some people might think that this can be sort of a superstitious belief too. But all this are actually a shadow, a reflection or an image of Jesus. So this is a temporal practice while what Jesus did is permanent. And he will present any one thing before God, anyone who believes in his work. Jesus is the great high priest. And through him, we no longer have to practice all these uh, rituals in the temple. Because in him, we are all made clean once and for all. He is there interceding for us. So is there a next plate? A dessert maybe? Uh, well, dessert depends on how much you want to eat. Uh, others like more desserts, but others only few or they don't like any sweets. Can be ice cream bowl or just plain small plate. So uh, we don't talk about the dessert plates anymore. But surely with so many plates, there are plates that have been damaged or chipped over time, or because of use. What are we to do with them? Since they are also carefully selected by the Master himself. So, 21 to 22 says, No man of the offspring of Aaron, the priest, who has a blemish, all shall come near to offer the Lord's food offering, since he has a blemish. He shall not come near to offer the bread of his God. He may eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy things. So I relate this to the damaged plate. So who among you here wears glasses or contact lens? And who among you here have one hand stronger than the other? That is the same exact. Or what else? Who among you here, here among you here is hunched back? or vertically, vertically challenged. Uh, so sad to say, if you raise your hands, we uh, can serve in the temple. But that's in the Old Testament time. You know? We will not have the opportunity to serve the Lord because of our, what do you call that? The uniformity. Uh, well, techni technically, only the Levites are allowed to serve. So if a person has any, def any defects at all, they have a zero chance of offering their food to the Lord. It says in verses 18 to 20, No man who has any defects is to come near, no man who is blind, lame, facially disfigured, or deformed, no man who has a broken foot or hand, or who is a hunchback or a dwarf, or who has an eye defect, a festering or crash, scabs, or a crash testicles. That's written in the Bible. So no place with defects are to be presented to the master. If this was is a requirement for today's age, they will say that God is being racist or discriminating people. Now yet this was given because the priests are coming into the presence of a perfect God. On the other hand, priests also present God to the people. And since we people are 
equipped to associate deformities or sickness to sin, those with that condition can hardly be a good, a good example for the people to see the temple. For example, if you are going to a gym to pump up your muscles, uh, you would want you would not want a skinny person to help you up when you're doing that deadlift. But you would rather have this guy. You know, that's John Cena. The best thing. So I would rather have him than this other guy. As a matter of fact, people are not concerned about this requirement that uh, if you're in fact, you should not serve. Uh, because they are more concerned of what? They are more, more concerned of the meaning behind that rule or guidelines. Today, people are very critical of things that they would question everything that they become too engrossed with the non-essential things. It's not bad to ask questions, but if it goes overboard, then that becomes a problem. Another example is just like this small cup. So this is the cup that Indian tea is receiving. Uh, it has a chip on the bottom. I think she was drinking um, uh, soup at that time. That's why there's a chip in the bottom, that's why it's still there. Okay? And quite place on the table. Although it's still useful and can do its job, it gives a hard time for her to enjoy the soup. But by using this cup, the restaurant seems also seems not to show respect to their customer or value. So after some struggles, she finally asked the waiter to replace her cup uh, with a new one, to which time they complied. So a little defect, uh, defect may not look like much, but it can have great uh, effect on what they have. Uh, and serving a perfect God leaves no room for imperfection. That's the requirement we have read earlier. So what are we going, what are they going to do now? So plate defects are still useful or plants for the purpose. They're not totally out of the picture, but they can still serve. The only exception is that they're not allowed to directly approach God and to offer that their offering. The scripture even says that they can eat the food from the most holy or end of the holy things. They are not rejected. In fact, they seem are able to still enjoy the blessings that has come. I think this is the last one. The master of the place, not the place. Place, the rest of it. In this chapter, in Leviticus 21, we can see a common phrase being mentioned again and again. And it says, I, the Lord, who sanctifies you, and am holy. And another verse says, I am the Lord who sanctifies him. And then another one says, I am the Lord who sanctifies them. We may think, okay, I avoid bad people. I did not touch them. Uh, I, I, I have I've been servant. We go through the serve sanctification for quite a few days, so I'm clean. But it says here, I, uh, I made, I'm holy because God made us holy. So he's the one who makes sure every faith is clean. All in all, it is God who makes the priest holy. It is not the rituals or obedience to the law that makes one holy. It is God who has chosen his people and made them holy to him. Call them out from this world to be his people. God calls out the Israelites to be his people in the New Testament. Uh, and, and sorry, God calls the Israelites out to be his people, and in the New Testament, the good news has been given to all people who are Lord Jesus Christ. So in our Bible reading in Romans chapter 9 to 10, shows us that it's not in what we do or follow that makes us righteous. It's from the heart uh, of whom we really believe in. It is embedded in us. Uh, it's there that, that there's no need for people to tell us what to do because we already know it from the heart. So that's a good thing. We don't have to say, 
Oh, I go to Sunday. I go to worship every Sunday. But it's because the Lord is already in our hearts. So 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So we are the place that reflects this greatness. We were saved, taken out of the darkness because of our Lord Jesus Christ. This verse seems to speak of Leviticus 21, the way it was arranged or told. As priests, we come to God in humility and in His service, and as priests, we present God to the people. We reflect His greatness. And if we will go back to how God created humans, He created Adam and Eve one in His image. If we are a reflective faith, can God see Himself in us? If we are a faith that reflects images, can God see Himself in us? So what image do we reflect? Whose image do we actually reflect today? What do you do to prepare yourselves to meet the Lord during Sundays? Do you come as clean plates or with lots of stains? What superstitious belief challenges you not to trust in God? Are you partnering with unclean people? What are you implying if you serve food to your master with a damaged plate? In what way can you serve the Lord my God? All these are written in that, uh, in that paper given to you. If we are His reflection, may this verse also reminds us of how we are to live for Him. Uh, let's read this together, 1 Peter 4 11. Whoever speaks is to do as one who is speaking the utterance of God. Whoever serves is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory, the kingdom, forever and ever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, we come before you, knowing that we are unclean, but thank you for this of your love for us. You welcome us today. Lord, help us to be clean for you, to be your service each day, that we will not be stained by this world. Help us with your guidance and your spirit to win over that. Let's again come to you ourselves that we may be a clean faith before you, offering your sacrifices, offering our lives as living sacrifices for you. Thank you, Mr. Craig, in Jesus' name.